You know, they say that Microsoft 365 is like New York City. It's the cloud service that never rests. And I'll tell you, with the number of updates that are incoming, it's absolutely true. And in this session, we're going to take you through just some of the cool things that you need to know. Stay tuned. Greetings my fellow YouTubers, so nice to see you again. Welcome back to my channel, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP. So nice to see you. Now, on this episode, we're going to talk about the ever-changing uh, landscape that is Microsoft 365. It seems that every week there's a new announcement or some new feature that's going to be included. And this week, of course, you cannot fail to note uh, something called Copilot. So Microsoft's acquisition or inclusion, I should say, of ChatGPT into all things Microsoft and all things Azure. So I'm going to take you through just some of the interesting snippets of news. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Now, um, uh, now of course, Microsoft 365 Azure Active Directory continues to be enhanced and improved. And we're going to talk about just some uh, of my favorite new features uh, that you definitely need to know as an administrator. Now, if you want to ask questions about this or any of my other sessions, of course, just get those down below. And if you've not subscribed, then we'd love to have you on board. So hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and you'll be notified of any new postings or videos that are coming your way. So I think without any further ado, let's jump in and discuss some of these cool new features. And remember, stick around for more details on Microsoft Copilot a little bit later. Enjoy. First up, I want to talk about Azure Active Directory. The directory service of Microsoft 365 and all things Microsoft are going from strength to strength. And I want to come down here into Protect and Secure, and I want to talk a little bit about authentication methods. Now, authentication methods, of course, allow us to log in to Microsoft 365 and other products using different authentication methods. So, for example, I'm sure you're aware that we can use things like the Microsoft Authenticator app. You've got a voice call and SMS. Um, you can use these, by the way, if you have the Teams Premium license. So make sure that you check out that. That's definitely one reason to have that. Um, you can also authenticate by the use of certificate-based authentication, and I've covered this on a previous video. Now, one huge development in the uh, authentication methods in Microsoft Azure is the introduction of FIDO keys. FIDO keys, of course, were a combination of Ubico and Google and Microsoft, and essentially it's a hardware-based authentication key that combines with something like a biometric. So facial recognition or a fingerprint or something like that. And it's super easy to set up. You can target all users or just specific groups of users. And again, you can configure and users can set this up. So this is perfect if you're in a call center, for example, and you walk up to any machine in the call center, you stick your uh, key in and you use your biometric and you get authenticated for true passwordless authentication. But the problem, of course, is that you need a FIDO key. Well, it looks like the industry is finally replacing those hardware-based tokens, and Microsoft are definitely on board with this exciting development as well. So these are called pass keys, and essentially pass keys, you can have physical pass keys, which are essentially the FIDO keys, or you can have digital pass keys. So the idea of pass keys is that rather than having a hardware-based physical key, that key will be stored on your Microsoft Authenticator app. So combined with a biometric, such as a face or a fingerprint, the idea is that you'll then authenticate in pretty much the same way that the Authenticator app works at the moment. You'll be presented with a code, a location, and you'll then confirm that it's you. Now, another benefit or another improvement in the Microsoft Authenticator app 
is well the one limitation that it's always had was that you it was just aligned to one organization now of course uh, it's aligned you can have multiple profiles in there so you can have multiple different organizations multiple different logins and of course ultimately multiple different pass keys so definitely check this out this is a super development and i'll bet you any money that in the not too distant future, this will be replaced by the word passkey. So watch out for this exciting development. For my second option here in Microsoft Entra, I'm gonna scroll down into the Microsoft Identity Governance area here. And uh, again, this is something I've looked at before, but I just want to mention it because it's super exciting. Um, currently in preview, you've got something called lifecycle workflows here. And the idea of a lifecycle workflow is that these are designed to integrate with third party connectors that connect to tools like, um, for example, HR uh, applications, HR systems. And you can see that we've got something called workflows here. And you can create workflows for both onboarding and offboarding employees. So the idea is you can create a workflow and essentially it's a template here. So for example, if you're pre-onboarding a, a new uh, employee or if you somebody you're leaving the organization and it's a real-time termination, um, again, you know, you need to ensure that your systems are secure. And likewise, when you onboard a new employee, you can go into the details here of the template and it gives you the details I can select this template here and you can see I can give it a name and uh, again you can essentially set up what we call a trigger and the idea is that the workflows are designed to work alongside HR uh, who are using these uh, third-party um, HR tools so again you can uh, onboard the person so from x number of days before the user joins the organization i can basically say okay what's the scope type you can see it's rule based because i've already configured it and i can add various expressions so i can say okay if the user is joining a department or for example if the user is joining marketing and i could say or sales in let's say Aberdeen, Scotland, then um, I want to basically create the user account, enable the account, I want to send a welcome email, I want to perhaps add the user to a group, and once I've done that, I can then go and review and essentially go ahead and create this. So, and that Think about it, if you're using third-party HR tools, this is gonna be such an exciting uh, development in Microsoft 365. And it's really designed to work with HR. And, you know, I kind of get the feeling that, you know, for onboarding new employees, what's the point of duplicating things? So if you're using a HR system, then it really does make sense that you kind of bypass the administrators. It saves time. Likewise, you can, you've also got any deleted workflows that you might have deleted. They stay in the recycle bin here. And of course, you can restore those uh, for up to 30 days ahead. We also have access to things like the audit logs here as well. So again, you can keep track of everything that's going on. Uh, now, in terms of the workflow settings, you can choose obviously your domain name here and you can choose the schedule. So you can configure the schedule for the execution of workflows. So how often do you want the schedule to run? Uh, again, it defaults to three hours, but again, you can extend that as well. So there we have it. Lifecycle workflows in Microsoft Apps. Now, unless you've been living on the moon recently, you wouldn't have heard of something called ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is absolutely amazing. It's the next generation of artificial intelligence. And of course, it's a major industrial revolution in terms of IT. And it's going to change our world forever. Now, Microsoft, of course, have just recently announced Copilot. 
Actually, to be fair, Microsoft have recently announced not just one co-pilot, but a whole series of co-pilots for their various systems. So including Windows 11, Microsoft 365, of course, and we also have a new security co-pilot. So fully integrated into Windows is this first edition, and instead of just a regular chatbot type interface, we now have a full centralized AI assistant. Now the difference between this and ChatGPT of course is that everything is private. Everything doesn't go beyond, it's nothing uh, public and as well as typing queries you can also drop documents in. For example if it's a Word document, it's a very long, you can just say hey I just want to summarize it. In addition, it also works with your all your Windows apps as well. So, for example, if you want to play music, if you want to stay creative, for example. And I think this is going to be incredibly successful for Microsoft. So definitely when it's available, check out the new Windows Copilot. I think it's going to be absolutely awesome. So, yeah, so that's the Windows Copilot, uh, which will be available very, very soon. In addition, of course, we also have the Microsoft 365 Copilot, which now integrates fully into all the Microsoft 365 applications, including Intune, Excel, Word, and so on. Uh, watch out for this. This is going to be absolutely awesome when it comes into public preview very, very soon. So definitely sign up for that. At the moment, it's only available for a, a handful of customers who are currently testing it. But... It'll be available very shortly, so check it out. Something that I'm super excited about is the Security Copilot, and this is something that is going to be invaluable for security professionals around. The difference is, of course, is that your data is your data. So any kind of uh, activity that you perform on your tenant or your content is going to stay absolutely private within your organization. Um, so it, you can use it to find responses and answer questions. Uh, you can edit or rerun or even delete the response as well. And so if you find that something's not quite accurate, of course, you can feed back to Microsoft and you can also pick in that uh, response to your dashboard so that you can use it again. So again, this is, I think, super, super useful. Um, and again, as I said, if you discover it's not right, then because it's an internal Microsoft technology, then what we can do is you can update the Microsoft support groups, the support teams, with the, and just flag up and say, hey, you know, this is not right. Can we fix it? So, um, again, so help Copilot fix things. Now, uh, again, you, within your organization, you may have IT professionals, you may have security professionals. And let's say, for example, you, you receive a malicious script here. Now, you might want to reverse engineer that malicious script, but don't have the team. So now you can see that the security co-pilot will completely uh, reverse engineer that script so that you can find out um, what exactly caused that malware, that issue within your organization. So uh, security co-pilot absolutely rocks. Check it out. So with AI playing such an important part in data, one question is, what about my privacy? So unlike ChatGPT, which is a public service, so anything that you share with ChatGPT is essentially public. Um, whereas if you use um, Copilot, then it's not public. It's going to be private and under your control. So looking at Microsoft 365, for example, you've got to wonder where on earth they're going to bring in the admin controls for Copilot. Well, I'm predicting that it's going to be down here in settings and search and intelligence. Now, already you can connect uh, Microsoft Search to third party data connectors. And there's loads of different data connectors that you can connect to. Um, we've also got things like you can the ability to query various analytics, um, both user connections and so on. So things like acronyms within your organization, product acronyms, you know, if you're a car manufacturer or an aircraft manufacturer. Um, things like bookmarks, so you can bookmark um, websites, you can bookmark content within your organization. So another thing that you can bring in, of course, is locations. And you can see here that it's detected that uh, Microsoft 
Um, and again, I can publish that location. So, you know, if you had visitors on site, they want to find content and so on, and also which locations you've been to, you can bring in those multiple locations so that it's easy uh, for people to locate. Um, in addition, you can also add in things like common questions and answers. But pretty soon, I'm putting money on here that you're going to have co-pilot settings here. And this is ultimately where you are going to configure it. So watch out for that. Uh, just before I leave co-pilot, one question is that people are asking is, do you think it's going to be a free service or an, a paid service? Well, with the security co-pilot and some of the amazing functionality that that has, we already know that that is going to be a paid service and probably will sit alongside the likes of Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft's uh, Azure Sentinel. So there you have it, just some of the new features included in Microsoft 365 and in Azure Active Directory. Some of them are really cool. Hey, listen, I really hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, bump the subscribe button, ring the bell, come on board and join my learning community. And if you want to ask questions, as always, just get those down below. So thanks so much for joining me and you take care and I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.